It was images of Australian cattle suffering in Indonesian abattoirs that earlier this year caused the shutdown of the live export trade between the two countries. Today came the raft of changes which the federal government hopes will ensure that in future livestock sent overseas will be treated humanely. This will provide a roadmap for the future for this industry. It will put the industry on a sustainable footing. It will ensure that the industry has a bright future. It will ensure that the industry can continue to improve, continue to ensure that the supply chain in place meets animal welfare standards. The Agriculture Minister appointed Australia's former ambassador to Indonesia, Bill Farmer, to conduct its review of the live export trade. He's come up with 14 recommendations which the government has promised to adopt in full. By the end of next year the changes will make it necessary for all animals to be tracked, audited and handled according to international welfare standards. The report's author says the system will minimise the risk of animals being treated cruelly without having to shut down the entire industry if problems do emerge. So guarantees, no I don't think you can, you can do that, but we've, uh, we've recommended and the government has accepted a, a system uh, which will give us uh, a, a basis for saying yes this is working or no uh, it's not. Uh, and you don't have to take a global uh, uh, approach to, to fixing up problems, you fix up problems country by country or supply chain uh, by supply chain and that means uh, that you, you can either fix up a problem or the government cannot give an export licence but in a particular uh, supply chain. The peak body representing Australian farmers has welcomed the changes, calling them a good and balanced outcome. We're obviously uh, very happy about this, uh, happy that the uh, trade will remain open. Uh, as I say it's an important part, one part of the, uh, of the agricultural industry but an important part of the agricultural industry also. But other lobby groups argue the government is still putting profits before animal welfare. They're disappointed the mandatory stunning of animals before slaughter won't be adopted. This framework will certainly go some way to preventing a lot of what we saw from, from not happening anymore. Unfortunately, it doesn't take that extra and we believe essential step and expect to meet the expectations of the Australian community and require stunning. Indonesia has moved quickly to introduce stunning as a result of Australia's export bans. The RSPCA says 90% of Indonesian abattoirs will have adopted the practice by the end of the year. We don't ourselves require stunning domestically, so it's a bit hard to enforce that on other countries. The review saw animal killing practices overseas, both stunning and non-stunning, that were totally in accordance with the OIE guidelines. We also saw practices, both stunning and non-stunning, that, that fell far short of the OIE uh, guidelines. Stunning applied uh, uh, incorrectly uh, is not a humane uh, uh, practice. Meanwhile farmers admit they've underestimated the strength of community feeling over the issue. That we as an agricultural industry need to completely re-engage with the Australian community and some of the animal welfare groups and RSPCA. And I think we've, uh, we've become too separated. They don't understand our industry and we certainly don't understand what a lot of their demands are on our industry. The government wants to establish a committee including industry groups and animal welfare organisations in a bid to find common ground. Nick Grimm, ABC News.